Amazing. How good is that? Is it so exciting? The church is the people. Well, a huge welcome. How exciting. We're in the room. So excited. Um, I feel like I couldn't sleep last night. I was just so excited. But a huge welcome to everyone who's in the room with us this morning. And a huge welcome to everyone who is online watching at home or whatever you're doing, however you're watching online today. And a massive welcome to anyone visiting with us. Um, we just want to say a big welcome to you and hope we can connect, whether that's online with you on the online chat or here in person. We just want to say a quick couple of things. First thing is City Kids. For those of you who are kids in the room, which we've got a few, um, but also kids at home, City Kids TV is available now on the YouTube channel, um, but it will also be live streaming at 11.30 if you want the online chat, because I think a few of the kids have fun chatting on there. So 11.30 on the on online stream, or it's available on YouTube now, which is very exciting. We're going to go into a time of worship, and uh, something that I really felt uh, yesterday Yesterday, God was speaking to me as we were praying here, and I really felt God say these words, if only you knew what I was about to do. And it really struck a chord in me of thinking, gosh, if only I knew what God was about to do, I wonder what would be different about my attitude towards God, my stance towards him, my expectation of what God is going to do. And I really just want to say that to encourage us all this morning, because God has been doing amazing things, and he is going to do more incredible things in years and in months and in days to come. But what's so important is how we um, posi position ourselves to be expectant for God. And it's so easy to just become familiar with things, but how much more exciting is it when we come with childlike excitement and anticipation in hunger and desperation for what God is going to do? And so as we enter into a time of worship together, online, at home, or in the room today, can I encourage you to have that heartfelt attitude of God? If only I know what you're about to do, I'm going to come today with hunger and excitement for what you are going to do. So let's work together this morning. Well, good morning, church. So good to see you. Welcome to City Coast. Whether you're in the room or watching online, you're so welcome here. Come on, we're going to worship God together this morning. Let's do it. Lift your voice. an anthem in the making can you feel it start to rise can you hear the generations getting louder over time every son and every daughter singing out into come on here we go it's not time to be silent don't you dare hide your light there's a world outside your window, so don't let it pass you by. Lift your voice to the heavens, lift your voice to the sky. Praise the Lord of all creation, let His name be lifted high. Singing, oh, oh.
the blink of an eye, death and all I sin nowhere inside. For the Lord, He is alive. See the lost return from the dead of the night. Every captive free, every chain left behind. Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? All the world coming alive. Here we
Sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise aloud. Mm. Awake my soul and sing. Sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise aloud. Oh, we sing that again. Awake my soul. Oh, awake my soul. Oh, we have a reason. Oh, we have a reason today. Oh, He redeems your life. He restores your soul. He heals your diseases. Crowns you with loving kindness. Crowns you with tender mercies. Fills your life with good things. This is our God. This is our God. This is our God. This is our God. We sing when He moves. Yeah, yeah. And when He moves. And when we pray. Western wall now stands away where every promise is amen and when he moves make no mistake the bowels of hell begin to shake oh hail the lord oh hail the king
so frustrating that, frustrating that we can't sing, but we can clap and praise from our hearts. So let's clap as loud as we can. If you're at home, you can sing, you can do whatever you want to do right now. Come on, how good is that worship? How good are those songs that we're declaring over our lives that He is Almighty God? I love that. I love being in this place and joining with everyone online this morning. It is so good that we can be in this new term together. And if you're in this room, you can grab your seat. Thank you so much for participating in worship. And if you're at home, we are so glad that you connected in online. Maybe you're watching this on the rebroadcast. And uh, we're really glad that you've, you've tuned in this morning or this afternoon or whenever you may be watching. My prayer today is that we, in this new term and in this new season, in this new chapter, that as a church, we would have fresh eyes to see the beauty, the wonder, and the power of God's church. That for some of us, we would have the boldness to break out of just the Christian cycles that we've been stuck in for so long. That for some of us, it's time to stop sitting back and just rating what your church experiences is like and really begin to understand that church is far more than just one Christian event in a week. I want to experience more of the presence of God in my life. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, if I'm absolutely honest, I, I'm more dissatisfied with the treadmill that we can feel in our lives of a church program don't, don't get me wrong. I love what we get to do. I love gathering. I love what we facilitate as a church. It is so good. I was like a kid on Christmas Eve yesterday thinking that I'm going to be able to speak actually in front of people and not just the camera this morning. I, I, I love what we get to do. But I just wonder about sometimes whether we downsize the significance of what God has called His church to be because we get comfortable in our Christian routines. I want a faith that is not shaken when the stabilizers of the church program comes off. And I want to invite us as a church into a new season where we stop just going to church and we start being the church. We, we understand what it is to be God's church. And I just wonder whether God's plan for good in the midst of the most tragic circumstances and events surrounding COVID-19, I wonder whether God's plan for good was simply to shake us out of this convenience that we've called church. I know in my life how easy it has been to enjoy a relationship and to attend a Sunday gathering and say that I am a follower of Jesus, yet not change, not grow, and not become more like Him. And maybe you could agree this morning, how easy is it for us to lift our hands towards heaven, to be praising and worshiping. And then the moment we lift this, leave this building, it's like suddenly our hands fall down to the comfort of our lives. We find that as we can leave this building called City Coast, we can find ourselves suddenly slipping back in some of the dysfunction that God is trying to bring us out of. And I believe that God has got so much more for us today. I really do. And I've been challenged to the very core over this time as to whether my faith is based in a Sunday gathering that I've always known 
but whether my commitment is to a program that fits around my routine and my schedule, or whether from the depths of my heart, I am committed to living an inconvenienced life in order to follow Jesus. It's a challenging thought. I promise you, I am challenging myself. This is just me sharing what God is doing in me. And I hope that it challenges you today. Jesus said the most unbelievable statement in the Bible. He was speaking to his disciples and he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. If that doesn't get us excited, I don't know what will. (laughs) I will build my church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Jesus was not referring to an organization. He was not referring to a facility or a monument. He was not even referring to a geographical location, but He was saying, I will build my people and the gates of hell, all of hell, will never conquer it. What Jesus is saying is, if you follow me, if you commit to a life bigger than your own dreams, if you commit to laying down what feels significant to you, if you commit to understanding that our time on earth is short, that there is a home away from home, we are at a home away from home, that there is a king and there is a kingdom. And if you commit to my ways, then I'm going to build you. And can I tell you, all of hell is going to crumble around you. The work of the enemy, the plans of the enemy, it's never going to conquer you because you are my people. There is so much power and so much significance in being the church of Jesus. If the church really is the people, then it means the church lives everywhere. It means wherever you go, the church goes. It it means the church is so much bigger and so much more impactful than we give it credit for. If the church is the people, then wherever we go, the church goes. It's funny because we can work so hard. And you can probably tell this morning, I'll just say I'm pretty passionate because I haven't been able to speak in front of people for a while. So I'm, I don't really apologize for that because I really believe what we're speaking, but I'm just excited. It's funny because we work so hard to get people through the door of the church, through the door of this building. And this place will always be a home to the broken, the hurting, the lost. It will always be a place where people can find a hope in Jesus. But I just wonder about what our impact and the power would be on our city and humanity if we realized that the front door of the church was never meant to be on a building, but it was the life that we were living. It that everywhere we walked, everywhere we went, we realized that we are the church our friends, our family. It's not that they've never been to church. They've encountered you. They've met the church. They've encountered the church. The question is, are we the church? Are we carrying the presence of God? We were, I was at a coffee shop a couple of months ago and uh, that's probably no surprise there, but I was drinking, oh, I wasn't drinking. I ordered a coffee in a coffee shop in Oxford and uh, I was waiting for my coffee and suddenly the door burst open. This lady ran in and she was sweating head to toe. She was exhausted. She'd just been on a bike riding. She's just like, I need a coffee. And so the waitress, the, the lady there started making her coffee and this lady uh, just suddenly looked up and just said, oh no, you don't take cash. And something in me just felt, I'm I'm just going to get her coffee. So I just grabbed my card out. I banged it on the contactless thing and said, oh, I would love to get your coffee today. And the lady, she said, thank you. And then she began to ask me, how's the coffee shop been? Have you been busy during this time? Has it been a, how's it been with COVID? And I just think it's absolutely hilarious that the culture of God's kingdom is so countercultural to this world, the culture of generosity, that the fact that I was buying her a coffee, this lady thought, there's no way someone would do that. He must work at this coffee shop. Isn't it incredible that the culture of God's kingdom is so different to the culture of this world? That is why it's so easy to be different and to be the light of the world that Jesus calls us to. But I said to this lady, I said, oh, I I actually don't work here. And straight away, she's like, oh my goodness, and starts rustling through her purse, trying to find some coins. I'm like, no, 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 honestly, it's okay. It'd be my absolute privilege to buy you a coffee today. I I said that I'm, I'm a part of a church and 
Well, we talk about being generous a lot of the time, and this is a great opportunity for me in a small way to be generous. Let me buy you this coffee. And this lady said to me, she said, where's your church? Because I need a church right now. I said, well, I'm so sorry. I'm actually uh, visiting up in Oxford, but uh, the church that, that we're a part of is down in Brighton. And as soon as I said the word Brighton, suddenly her face dropped. Suddenly her face was full of grief. And she looked at me and she said, Brighton, that's where my daughter who was studying at university six months ago, she committed suicide. And I looked at her and I said, I am so sorry. I couldn't imagine the grief and the pain that you must be experiencing today. And then she said something to me, which it's marked me for good. I'm never going to forget this moment. This is what she said to me. She said, I only wish she met you. This lady wasn't saying, I wish she met Jamie Harland. This lady was saying, I wish she met the church. Hope carriers, light bearers, followers of Jesus, not a program that we go to on Sunday, but a bunch of people who are filled with a hope and a gospel, armed with miracle working power, a people who are, who are on a mission to bring light and love to the darkest places of this world. Imagine if we never kind of thought that church ended on a Sunday. <laughs> Imagine if we lived life as though church never ended on a Sunday, but everywhere we went, we were carrying this love. We were carrying this gospel. We were carrying this light that our world needs. Imagine the impact of that. And I'm praying today that as a church, that God would open the eyes of our heart, that as a family in our lives, that we would break off any limits, that we wouldn't find ourselves falling down into comfort and convenience but as a family we would find the privilege and the power of being God's church. Let me tell you about the journey, the beautiful invitation that God has given every one of us to be a part of His church the invitation that He would choose us as a resting place for His presence. We see that from the beginning of time God desired He wanted to walk and live among His people and we read that, that God said to Moses in the book of Exodus, He said, I want a kingdom of priests. But what this was describing was God's heart to personally walk uh, with people, to be present with people. He, he didn't want just a select group of priests, but He wants a kingdom of priests, a people who He lives among. And so he said to Moses, can you build an ark which you can place in a tabernacle? And that ark is where my presence will reside. It's where my presence will be. And so we see that the people of God, that they would carry around this ark everywhere they went. And where they went, the presence of God went with them. It was amazing. It was incredible. But it did not suffice because God wanted a kingdom of priests. And the trouble with this ark is that it was only a select group of priests were able to come and experience the presence of God and have direct access to this. And so we see that Solomon, he built this incredible temple. It was unbelievable. He built this huge, majestic, wonder-filled temple. It was incredible. And the Bible tells us that the priests who were carrying the ark, the presence of God, that they came into the temple and they put the ark in the temple. And the moment that the priests left the temple, suddenly the temple was filled with the presence of God. It was spectacular. It was unbelievable. It was amazing. And yet again, we see that the presence of God was limited to just one physical location, the temple in Jerusalem. What we see again that as amazing and incredible as it was, it wasn't fulfilling God's desire to live among a people. And so we come out of the Old Testament thinking, well, when is this kingdom of priests going to come? When are we going to see these people who are carrying the presence of God, these people who are walking with God and God is living among them? And we arrive in the New Testament and we see Jesus coming. Jesus arrives, it's the big moment because Jesus now is the temple. 
He is the presence of God in physical form. But even Jesus, He chose to come in human likeness. He chose to limit Himself to one physical location. And one physical location meant it was the same as the temple. It was the same as the tabernacle that people would have to come to experience the presence of God. But there was this moment where Jesus was speaking to the disciples in John 16 verse 7. And he said to them this crazy statement. I feel like I say this nearly every month because it blows my mind. He says, it is better that I go. It is better for you that I go because I'm going to send the advocate. He's coming. What Jesus was saying is it's so much better that I am not physically present here walking with you. Because if I go, my spirit's going to come. And that is the only way that God is going to have His desire fulfilled, that my spirit's going to live among all people. This is incredible. And so we see in the book of Acts, in Acts 2, this game-changing moment. Everything changed in one moment when the Holy Spirit came. And the presence of God, it didn't fill a temple. It didn't fill a tabernacle, but it filled a people. It was the followers of Jesus who were there, gathered, waiting for God. This was the moment. This was God's plan coming into completion, that He would be able to be made available to all people, not just a select few, but all people, that you and I, that we wouldn't have to make our way to a temple or to make our way to a physical location, but that we could have the Spirit of God living within us. We could have Kim alive in us, that His presence, would fill a people. This was the birthing of the church. This is where the church began. This is what we are experiencing today. It all began in this moment when everything changed because His presence lived in a people. His presence went from a tabernacle to a temple to Jesus and now it lives within us. Isn't this incredible? (laughs) Isn't this amazing? You might say, I already know this. If you knew this, you would be jumping up and down, going ballistic. This is amazing. This is the church that God is inviting us into. This is what God is inviting us into today. That we would be His new temple. That as a people, not as a place, not as a church building, but as a people, that we would be home to His presence, that we would be a walking home of God's presence. How cool is that? This is amazing. That wherever we go, His presence goes. Wherever we walk, His church walks. This this changes everything. Imagine if you were looking at Google Maps and you zoomed out onto the UK and you saw pictures of every single church building. How amazing would that be seeing all the church buildings around? But imagine if you could suddenly zoom out again and see the hundreds and thousands of people who are home to the presence of God walking around, not limited by time, not limited by location. This is what the church is. This is how big the church is. This is how wondrous the church is. Can you believe it that God could have chosen the most iconic building in all the earth for His presence to rest, but He chose you and He chose me. Broken, weak, difficult, nearly all the time. God chose us. If you're at home, you should be cheering. If you're in this room, we should be clapping. If this doesn't make us stand in awe of who God is, that He would choose us to be the house and the home and the new temple of His presence. I hope I'm explaining it well enough, but we're going to go to the Bible and see what Paul says. This is what he says in Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. He says this, yes. He says this, God is building a home. I love that. God is building a home. It's not built because people keep coming. God is building a home. He's using all of us irrespective of how we got there. That is such an important point that he says there because that shows us that when God says you're a new creation, you actually are a new creation. Irrespective of how you got here, He is building us in what He is building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now He's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone with Christ Jesus as the corner 
cornerstone that holds you all that, that holds all parts together. We see it taking shape day after day. A holy temple built by God. All of us built into it. A temple in which God is quiet at home. How amazing is that? Come on. Isn't church so much bigger and so much more miraculous than we give it credit for? So often we can put it down into just this Sunday gathering that I go along to and I see great people and I love that, but that's all it is. When we can see in the story, the history, the journey of from where go, what God wanting to be with His people and the measures and the steps He took that His Spirit, because of Jesus, can live within us. I tell you, the church is more miraculous, it's more full of wonder than I think we often believe. We are the church being built together, stone on stone, brick by brick, wherever you go, the church goes. And Jesus is the cornerstone. He's the cornerstone because the cornerstone sets the alignment. And as a church, as a community, we are being built together in alignment with the cornerstone that is Jesus. How incredible is that? It means that you will never experience the fullness of God if you live in isolation because God is actually building us together. His presence isn't restricted to one place, but it's in a people. And we see what Peter says. When Peter in the Bible, he's describing how we're connected to Jesus. We're going to be looking at this verse a lot over the next few weeks. He says this, You are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but He was chosen by God for great honour. I love that. It reminds us that it's okay to be rejected by people when you are chosen by God. goes on to say this about you and I, and you are living stones that God is building into His spiritual temple. Let me explain this, that Jesus is the living stone. And we on our own are just stones. We're rocks. But as we are connected to Jesus, the living stone, suddenly life comes into this stone. Life comes into our bodies. And suddenly we are being built together as the church, as this spiritual temple. And Peter was saying to the persecuted Christians at the time, he was saying to these guys, come on, you're living stones. You're not just pieces in this thing. You are alive in what God is building on this earth. And I pray that that would sink deep into our hearts today. If for you, church, is coming on a Sunday and other than that, living in isolation, then can I tell you, you are missing out on the power of what God is building in this house. God is building us together brick by brick as we commit to following Jesus as we commit to being built together and we come into alignment with the living stone, we become living stones, a part of what He is building. And for some people today watching online or in the room, you you know that your life is not in alignment with the cornerstone that is Jesus. And this morning, my prayer is that your eyes would be open to this invitation that God is giving you to come into alignment with the home that He is building in this place. Because as living stones, we have a place where we can do life together. As living stones, we have a place where we can experience the comfort of heaven whilst living on earth. As living stones, we have a place where we can grow together, where we can serve our city, where we can impact people's lives. And as we do this, as we build together life on life, stone on stone, we are building a holy habitation, a place which isn't marked by a geographical location, but by the cornerstone that is Jesus, that Jesus is present. And where He is present, He's able to save, He's able to heal, He's able to transform, He moves power. That's why when we worship, even when we're not singing in this room, or even when you're just at home, that's why when we worship, the presence of God is here. I begin to nearly cry because God is moving powerfully because His presence is here because a few living stones have gathered in faith and God moves. It is so encouraging that it is not based on a geographical location. Because that means as a church, we can gather as living stones at home when we're feeling run down, when we're feeling stressed by all that COVID brings, 
we can gather together and say, hey, we're living stones. And right now we gather in faith and the Bible tells us as living stones, we come under the cornerstone that is Jesus. And so if Jesus is here, something's going to change in our atmosphere right now. That, that's at work when you're dealing with difficult people. Jesus is here. The living stones are here. Invite a friend. Say so you're having a, a lunch, a friendship lunch. Get them somewhere near the office and pray and believe that as living stones, the presence of God would fill that office. Wherever we go, the church goes. We are living stones being built by Jesus. What a privilege. How much power is that? Vicky and I, a week ago, we were sitting in a restaurant and uh, we had just finished the meal and the, the lady who was serving us, she came up to us at the end and she says, I, I just said to my colleague, there is, there is something about you guys, something different. Uh, you, you've just made my day and you, I, I don't know, when I come close to you, and she's smiling, I don't know why I wasn't smiling. She's smiling, she's going, when I come close to you, I just get this good feeling. I just get a good feeling. Can I tell you, that wasn't the Harlan charm because there is not much of the Harlan charm. That was the presence of God impacting that life because two living stones, myself and my wife, were sitting in that restaurant. We brought church to a restaurant without even noticing it. That's what happens when we're living stones, when we're in alignment with who Jesus is. When we live in alignment with Jesus, when we're built as a house, when we're saying church isn't just coming to a place, but actually where I am sitting right now, whatever day, whatever time, whatever moment, the church lives here because I am a living stone of the house that God is building. And that really, that really is where we're going and where we're moving as a church. It's the same direction, but a fresh focus for us. What is it to be a living stone? What is it to be a part of this house God is building? And we're going to dive into this over the next few weeks. But let me say three things that it is to be a part of this house God is building. What do we do? Number one, we gather in faith. We gather in faith. Number two, we grow in community. And number three, we go on mission. What is it to be a living stone in the house that God is building here? We gather in faith, we grow in community, and we go on mission. Let me explain what I mean. I'm believing that in this season, more than ever, that we're going to commit to gathering in faith. Whether you are online, whether you are in the room, whether you're in Tesco's, whether you're in the middle of Brighton, it doesn't matter. When we gather, we're believing that we're going to build environments of faith where we inspire each other and the presence of God moves and things happen. Miracles break out. God moves powerfully because that's what we do as living stones. Number two, we're believing that we're going to commit to growing in community. That we would be brick on brick, stone on stone, growing together, locking lives together, strengthening each other. That this wouldn't just be a, a church program. Sure, that might facilitate something. But we would have a passion to grow together because you don't grow alone. We would have this passion to pray together. We, we would build relationship with each other and encourage each other in the things of God. We would own up for the things we've done and move forward together. Because as living stones, we are building this house and then finally, Finally, number three, we're going to go on mission because where the church goes, that's not it. Where we go, the church goes. Same thing. You know what I mean. <laughs> where we go, the church goes. I would argue that the greatest impact we're going to see is not going to happen in this room, but it's going to happen at workplaces, at schools, at shops, in homes. If we can just get this understanding that we are the church. And this is a journey for us. And it's okay if you're not straight away, whoa, yeah, that's me, I'm the church. But we're believing as a church, that as we move in this direction, as we realize what it is to be the living stones that God has called us to be. We gather, we grow, we go. We can do so much more together than we can apart. And my prayer today is that there'd be a perspective change for every one of us, that we would see the enormity, we'd capture a glimpse of what God has invited us into to be his church to be his people the wonder and the significance of what it is to be his church that we wouldn't downsize this church to a, a christian routine but as a community we gather grow and go 
because the church is the people. If you're in this room, how about we stand to our feet? And if you're at home, this is a moment just for you to open your heart as a family, as an individual. And what I want to do right now, we're going to pray and really ask God because I can preach and sweat as much as I can. But ultimately, we need God to open the eyes of our heart. We need just like in Acts 2 when the Holy Spirit came and filled the people. That's what we need right now to understand what it is to be a church. And so what I'd love is if you're at home, just to maybe lay hands on your household, just stand together, sit together, just take this moment. And in this room, the same thing. If you feel comfortable, if you're uh, here in a household, just to, uh, you know, maybe touch each other, that you know what I mean, um, and just be as a household together when we pray. Because we're going to believe that God, this is something we're doing as a church. We are community together. And I'm so sorry if you're on your own this morning in this room. We are with you and air hugging you right now and, and standing with you. We're going to pray. Vix, have you come? We'll pray. God, we thank you so much that you are building a spiritual temple here. God, what a privilege to be a part of your church. God, we stand in awe of the measures that you have taken in sending your son to die on a cross that we would be in relationship with you, that you could live not just among us, but within us, God. God, how awesome, how amazing is that? And God, we're so sorry for where we have put church into a box of just a, a Christian routine or an event we go to. And we ask today that you would open our eyes to what it is to be your church to the beauty and the wonder and the power of what it is to be living stones being built into the house that holds your presence, God. God, we ask in this season, as we move forward as a church, that we would gather in faith. Lord, for those of us who maybe struggle in faith, for those of us who just don't feel full of hope right now, God, we pray that as we gather online, as we gather in person, that there would be a faith that is irresistible. It is contagious, that it would fill our hearts and our minds, that we would leave with a belief of who you are and what you are doing. God, we pray that we would grow in community. For those of us not in a group or not in relationship, God, we ask that you would make the steps so clear as to how to become a part of community. And God, I pray for me as much as anyone else that I would become more like you, Jesus, in this time. That in community, as we grow together, we will become the people that you have called us to be. That change would take place. Transformation would take place. That we wouldn't sit in our same dysfunction anymore, but we would have a dissatisfaction with those things. And we would move forward and become who you have called us to be. And finally, God, I pray that we would go on mission. God, that this season more than ever, as the world is bound by fear, as the world is bound by hopelessness, that we would be those hope carriers, those light bearers in our world, that we would see our city and surrounding areas change, that we would see our homes, our workplaces transformed, not even because we're trying hard, but because we are your living stones and your presence is where we are. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this season. God, we give everything to you and we say, come have your way. Holy Spirit, fill our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, just as we stay standing, if we can bow our heads or close our eyes, and if you're at home, just take a moment of privacy in the family and in the, in the households. I want to give an opportunity before we end this service that if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, if you've never committed your life to become a follower of Jesus, to walk in the way that He is calling you, to experience life to the full as He says you will. That maybe you've known a religion, maybe you've never known anything about God. Let me tell you that Jesus, He came to this world to die the most horrendous death on a cross. He gave His life for all of the mistakes and the baggage and the regrets and the guilt and shame that you might be carrying today. And He gave His life that you would experience forgiveness from your past, new life today, and a hope for your future. And if today you're saying, Jamie, I've been searching for a hope. I've been searching for something to fill the void inside of me. And I've looked all over the world and I can't find anything. Can I tell you that Jesus wants to fill that void today? 
as you take a step to commit your life to Him, to follow on His ways. I'm telling you, it won't be the easiest. It won't be the smoothest journey, but you will feel more fulfilled, more full of joy, more, more peaceful than you have ever felt in your life before. So right now, if that is you and you've never made that decision, or maybe you've made that decision, and you found that you've just come out of alignment with the cornerstone of Jesus. Right now, I just want to give you an opportunity to pray this prayer after me. And whether you're in this room or whether you're watching online, when you pray this prayer, you're not praying to me, you're praying to God. And so how about we say all together, we're going to say this prayer, Jesus, today, I choose to follow you. I'm sorry for my sin. Thank you for dying for me. Jesus, save me. Come into my life. Make me new. Help me know your love and grace for the rest of my days. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, look, we can clap in this room and we are clapping online. If you made that decision today, we are celebrating with you. It is so good. Hey, church, I've had the best time. I'm going to hand over to Vicky, who's going to bring some updates. But if you're watching online or you're watching in person, it is so great to be in this new term. And let's open our hearts to what God has to say to us this week as we become living stones, who He's called us to be. Vix. Amazing. You can grab your seats if you're in the room or if you're at home. You might want to grab your seats as well. Um, wasn't that such an amazing message? It's so exciting, this whole new series, this whole new season that we're in of the churches, the people. Like Jamie said, there's so much to digest um, and there's so much more that's going to be coming up in the weeks to come. Um, so can I encourage you if you, oh, well, I'm, sh- I'm hoping you enjoyed today, <laughs> but to um, come along next week, um, p- invite people, maybe people who um, haven't come today or people that you know just want to be in the room but maybe didn't get a chance to book a ticket um, this morning. So um, can I encourage you to do that but also a couple of things to um, point to first thing is next steps if you made a decision this morning whether that's at home or in the room um, can I encourage you just to um, if you're in the room speak to someone with a lanyard if you're at home uh, chat on the online chat or press the next steps button and one of the team would love to help you it's so hilarious having to chat to the camera and to the room it's such a new challenge and I love it um Another thing to point to is Wednesday, the 16th of September. So that is just under two weeks, I think. Uh, we have got an amazing prayer meeting on Zoom um, between St. Peter's, Holland Road, Emmanuel, and City Coast Church. And uh, Jamie um, meets regularly every couple of weeks with uh, the, all the four pastors of those churches. And there's such an amazing unity and relationship across these four churches across Brighton. We know there's many more churches in Brighton, but these four have such a unity. And I think for us, It's so important to use these amazing opportunities to gather together. It's so accessible just on Zoom. The details we'll send out in emails, but it's just a Zoom link. You can have it on in your laptop or your phone at home. And just to pray together over our city. It's going to be a really powerful evening. So it's Wednesday the 16th at 8 p.m just for an hour Um, but it's going to be a really powerful time and so if you can make it online um, can I encourage you to do so because I think God's birthing something new in our our city and how amazing that we all get to be a part of it like Jamie was saying we are the people that are part of God's church and so let's join together with our brothers and sisters across the city and pray for our city. Uh, giving online, we just want to say a massive thank you again to everyone who's continued to give over this time. Uh, we are just so amazed by everyone's generosity and love for the church. And as you've been giving, it's been helping us to be able to continue to provide church online, helping with the staff and with all the different uh, technical logistics that we've had. There's been so many things, care packages. I've lost count. Nicole will be able to help me at some point, but there's been thousands of care packages gone out over this season in so much of an impact because of people's giving and so can I just thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts Uh, thank you to everyone online for giving as well Uh, we are so so grateful 
groups, I'm nearly done, I promise, groups. Um, there are so many amazing groups happening. I know we talk about it a lot, but the reason why, like Jamie was saying, is God's building us together. And so much important things happen in groups. And so if you're not part of a group yet, do feel free to pop onto the website or onto the app, sign up to a group or ask any of the team wearing a lanyard, they'll be able to help you today. And so next week, we have got church online and in person. Again, watch parties happening again. Um, book online as much as you can in early in advance so that we can sort out logistics of here, of seating. So maybe today you want to book in for next week, the week after, the week after. We are so happy with that. Um, if you are at home online and maybe you wanted to be in the room today but didn't get a chance, please do jump online now. Book your tickets. Toilets are open, which is always a great thing. So exciting. Um, and other things will be opening as the government advises us. We are taking good, wise advice. And so we will open things as we can and we will let you know all the updates. But church, that's it for this morning. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing week. And we will see you soon.